same character design, same hairstyle and a very similar sounding name. Have we finally figured out the true identity of the mysterious Shinju? It has been revealed in the latest chapter that the Tentails are creating a hit list for their potential targets. And it seems like they are picking the people who are really close to their human counterparts. Coincidentally, Gara was among the best friends of Naruto and we might soon be getting an epic return of Team Shinki to the story. So let's dig deep into this. The way Kishimoto has introduced a new force of villains in the story that are not even all Suzuki's is pretty incredible. He made the Tentails gain consciousness which evolved them into Shinjus, the most dreadful villains so far. Every bad guy that appeared in the story prior to the Shinjus suffered from some drawback which reduced their intimidation. Momoshiki for example was straight up nerfed to set up the narrative of Boruto getting the karma and its aftermath. In the novels, he was said to be a solar system buster who had destroyed countless planets. Even Sasuke's interpretation of Momoshiki was a threat far more dangerous than Kaguya. But he still ended up getting defeated by Boruto, that too in his fused form. Ishiki on the other hand was given a time limit to live just to prevent things from going too bad. Similarly, Code was made the king of taking L's and the cyborg duo were made the allies of Konoha. The Shinju by far are the only threats that require some serious attention. It's crazy how both the mascots of the previous generation have been removed from the plot just when the shinobi world is facing the biggest danger. Maybe Kishimoto didn't want them to see their beloved village getting destroyed. However, the way Jura has called out now to his prey, everyone's perspective towards the Shinjus has changed. Why in the world would some new villain want to devour Naruto, who's not even an Osusuki and has been sealed with Daikokuten? While it's clear from Kawaki's statement in the prologue that Naruto is safe, the reason Jura wants to eat him is still a concerning mystery. So to understand why he came up with this purpose, we will need to figure out what triggered the Shinjus to consume humans at first place. According to Jura, their primary goal of consuming Boruto and Kawaki will remain the same. However, just because they have evolved differently, each of them will develop a personal desire of consuming a certain human being. As for Jura, it was Naruto that he wanted to devour just because his instincts tell him to do so. Similarly, the other Shinjus also have a predetermined target in their mind. Masuri goes with Konoha Maru, Hidari has went for Sarada and Bug is looking forward to Aida. Now, this selection of targets has has revealed something about their strange instant that many of you must have overlooked. But before moving on, please subscribe to the channel right now and comment below I subscribed. I will randomly choose two individuals to receive upcoming theories via Twitter or Discord, offering them the opportunity to contribute to them. Back to the theories, the Shinju seem to be going after people whom they loved as a human, but the type of love varies between all of them. Like Moegi's love for Konoha Maru could have a romantic angle, otherwise it's just the bond that they share as teammates. But I will go with the love theory because it makes more sense plot wise. Sasuke has the fatherly love for Sarada, that's why Hidari made her his target and Bug was just obsessed with Aida due to her charm, explaining why his Shinju went after her. So going by this analogy, Jura's human counterpart must also be connected to Naruto in some way. Now before explaining how it might be Gara and why his friendship with Naruto made the Shinju develop this instant, let's get into another possibility explaining how Ishiki might have something to do with Jura. Aside from the Gara theory, this Shinju being the Tentails manifestation of Ishiki also makes sense for some solid reasons. First and foremost, Ishiki hated Naruto a lot and it's safe to assume that the Shinju's human counterpart needs to share a strong emotion towards their target no matter whether it was love or hatred if the feeling was strong enough, the Shinju will go after that certain person. So Ishiki's hatred being the reason for Jura's strong desire to devour Naruto makes some sense. But how could Jura be the Tentails form of an Osusuki? Well, Jigen owned the Tentails seedling for years and he used to absorb his chakra frequently as well. Further, the chakra of a person remains on the planet even after their death and Ishiki must be the strongest of them all. So while choosing an avatar for itself, the Tentails went for the Osusuki for two reasons. Firstly, because he was familiar with him and secondly, he was the most powerful of them all. And as I said earlier, this explains his Naruto connection as well. So what about Soegi, the Jonin who sacrificed his life to save Sarada from the Claw Grimes? Was he just a folder who was used to portray the havoc of Claw Grimes or will he he have some plot relevance in the future. Well, it could be that the Tentails needed a medium to convert Ishiki's remnant chakra into a Shinju. Also, the word Soegi means splice, which refers to something that joins two things together, making this theory a lot more plausible. Another interesting reason explaining why Jura looks like Ishiki dates back to this panel where the superior Claw Grime attacks Kawaki. Maybe this Claw Grime used the Petra Path ability of the Renengan to absorb Kawaki's chakra, which is in turn Ishiki's chakra through physical contact. This means the 
Red Karma wielder is himself responsible for the creation of Jura. The Ten Tails is using Chakra in brand new ways, and they might even end up using Kawaki as a pawn in seeking revenge from the Osusukis. But let's discuss that some other time. Finally, the theory that all of you have been waiting for: What if Jura is actually Gara's Shinju avatar? He's among the few people in the verse who share a strong bond with Naruto. Maybe that's why he wants to devour him at first place. Moreover, their character design is also kind of similar, especially the hairstyle. Not to mention the name of Jura sounds like a fusion of Jubi and Gara. If this theory comes true, then we can expect to see a whole new angle of the time skip involving the other villages. Kurt sent his claw grinds to the hidden sand village in search of Boruto, where they ended up devouring the village leader Gara. And the reason Kishimoto did this is pretty mind blowing. Remember Team Shinki who appeared during the Chunin exam arc in the manga? It seems like they're about to be relevant again, as the Kazekage has been turned into a tree, and now their mission must be to get him back. A brilliant way to implement forgotten characters into the story. There was literally no need to expand the story of Gara by introducing his adopted son, but now it all makes sense. The only thing that I wonder is how will Shinki and his team provide any value to the plot? They are literally fodder again as Shinjus and don't even share any strong emotional connection with the main characters. It will be interesting to see how Kishimoto will make them relevant again. I think there is a slight possibility for Soegi to be the human counterpart of Jura, and here is why. In Konoha, everyone loves and respects Naruto just because he's a war hero, as well as the honorable Hokage. So when Soegi turned into a tree while saving Sarada, his consciousness could have made him Jura, and his admiration towards Naruto is why he targets him. Now let's talk about the plans of Jura that could help us to understand the time skip scene a lot better. The theory that I'm about to discuss includes the death of Naruto, along with some solid possibilities. I think the karma used by Kawaki in the flash forward is the second stage of Amaro's bio weapon, only because he's about to witness a huge emotional trigger by the hands of Shinju, and a strong emotion was what activated his karma at first place. The extreme desire of protecting Naruto activated the karmic weapon against Code. But what would happen if he witnesses the death of his beloved Lord Seven? In other words, what if he becomes the killer of Naruto, but in an unexpected manner? We know Jura wants to devour Naruto, and if he succeeds in this plan, we might get to see a Ten Tails version of Lord Seven. And as this would spoil the only dream of Kawaki, this could lead to an upgrade in his karma that would grant him more powerful abilities. It will also give us an explanation for what he means by sending Boruto where he sent the Seventh. He wants to kill him the same way he killed the Shinju of Naruto. The next thing that I'm really, really interested in is the shutdown code of Kawaki that's being held by Amaru. He could have shut Kawaki down before things went too far. Why didn't he do that? What was the need of letting the destruction and everything happen at first place? Could it be that Amaru is pulling the strings behind Kawaki for some reasons? Is he the main culprit behind every mishap in the Shinobi world? Well, the answer could be a yes if he deliberately refuses to stop Kawaki. He apparently has the master control of Code and Kawaki that he secretly implanted in them. There is something known as ACE or Arbitrary Code Execution, a vulnerability that allows attackers to inject their own malicious code onto a target system without user awareness or permission. Amaru being a genius scientist must have modified both the Kama users with ACE in order to use them as pawns when situation gets out of hand. He could have made Code witness the hologram of Ishigi through the Arbitrary Code Execution and something similar could be down the lane for Kawaki. The need for waging a war on shinobis could only mean that he failed his goal somehow and now he will misuse the karma of Kawaki by destroying the whole world. However, if he's not pulling the strings behind Kawaki and it was his own will to exterminate the shinobis, then the most possible thing is the death of the scientist. It will cause Kishimoto to introduce more new characters to expand into the Osusuki lore. There is no reason for Amado to let him destroy the whole village like this unless the daughter revival thing is a big fat lie and he wants to use Kawaki for a purpose that is beyond anyone's understanding. It would definitely involve the Osusukis as he knows way too much about them. However, the only big hurdle in his plan could be the Shinjus. These new characters hate the Osusukis very much, so a person who's too smart to be around will need to be killed by them as soon as possible. There's even a possibility for Amado to be aware of the biology behind the Shinjus and how their creation was an expected thing, mainly because he's responsible for modifying code with Shinjutsu, which indirectly led to the birth of these beings. There is so much more to talk about the new characters and I will be back very soon with more amazing stuff. So subscribe to not miss them and watch these videos for more Boruto entertainment. I will see you next time.